And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. Katie Hobbs will be the next governor of Arizona, a Democrat working with a Republican-controlled legislature. So what's that going to look like? Joining us now to talk about that is Democratic political consultant Tony Connie and Republican consultant Marcus Del Artino. Thank you both for being here. Let's start with you, Marcus. Um, <laughs> um, you've been down at the legislature a long time. You're the Republican oh, here at the table. What's the view? What, what's, what are you hearing from the Republican lawmakers coming in? What's their attitude? Are they going to just be, you know, an adversarial relationship? Are they going to try to limit Katie Hobbs to one term? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we do. Um, I, they're going to, we just need to look back at recent history, right? So look at the Napolitano administration to get sort of a playbook of where we're headed. But I, they're going to look to define Katie Hobbs, and Katie Hobbs is going to look to define herself before they can define her. So they're going to want to put her in tough positions, like every, you know, everything you can do related to illegal immigration in the border, every fentanyl seizure uh, we're, is going to lead to that discussion. It's going to be uh, topics like that to sort of try and put her in a box and use that veto pen. And, and Tony, how does Katie Hobbs avoid potentially being a one-term governor? And Arizona's been a long time since an incumbent has been voted out. I mean, you've got to go all the way back. Um, but what has what Hobbs got to do to avoid I think she needs to embrace how she won, which is that the people of Arizona were basically like, hey, look, we're not like a deep red state. We're not a deep blue state. We are a state where people want things to get done. And so, you know, really, it's going to be about finding the few people on the Republican side that are willing to work with her and trying to see what she can get done on big issues. And kind of maybe uh, piggybacking on, on that comment a little bit, um, this win is very narrow, um, definitely not a mandate. How should that affect Hobbs moving forward? Well, I think it's a mandate in the sense that that type of sort of hateful campaigning that had dominated on the Cary Lake side mm -hmm. isn't what people want. But you're right. It's not a mandate that one candidate or the other is like their entire agenda is going to go through. And so that's where I'm saying. It's like basically we got to work together. We have to find a way to work together. And when that kind of shenanigans comes up, she needs to be strong and she needs to, you know, brand them and identify them as saying like, hey, knock this off. You obviously didn't learn the lesson from the non-existent red wave, and let's uh, do what the people of Arizona want you to do. Yeah, and speaking of shenanigans, it could start real quick um, when Hobbs takes office. I mean, she has said that she wants to immediately try to repeal uh, the territorial abortion ban. That's the one that bans all abortions, no exceptions for rape and incest. The only exception would be for when the life of the mother is at risk for that. I mean, does she have the votes to do something? I suspect she probably doesn't just because the Republicans have a majority in the legislature, but... You know, there's also a backup. I'm not too sure the Republicans are in a bad position on this one. I think they sort of win either way uh, because there's a backup law to that mm -hmm. that we've that we've already passed. So um, I, I don't suspect that that's actually going to be the greatest uh, uh, wedge issue, frankly, in the next four years that Republicans are able to use. Do you agree with that? Do you think that the abortion won't be that big a wedge issue that, uh, you know, maybe Katie Hobbs can get something done like repealing that abortion ban? And then if they do... What does Hobbs do moving forward with the 15-week ban? That also includes no exception. Well, if we're talking about a mandate, there is a mandate nationwide that, you know, uh, Americans and Arizonas want to defend, you know, the right to a safe uh, abortion. I think mm -hmm. that that's true. And with this, you know, special session that she talked about, that's a campaign promise that she's delivering on. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Republicans who voted, um, you know, for the 15-week the ban, they should have no problem repealing this law. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not willing to do it, it's because they're playing politics with it. And so I think in that way... It's going to be the very, they're going to think that they're going to really get it to her. She didn't get it done, but I think it will show like, hey, look, they're playing games. These people all voted in a way that would have been consistent with what I'm asking for in March. And so I think keeping to keep pushing that kind of stuff is what she needs to do and just be consistent and just keep fighting. Yeah, right? and it always comes down to the votes and whether she has that and whether there's going to be some mm -hmm. Republicans down there that are willing to work with her. Now, moving on, you brought this up a little bit, um, some potential uh, political landmines for Hobbs moving in to the, into the ninth floor is that immigration issue. Now, we just spoke about that. As we speak right now, Governor Doug Ducey is still putting those steel shipping containers uh, down along the border wall to plug those gaps down there. He's finished the, the mission in the Yuma sector. They're on to Cochise County. I mean, does Katie Hobbs, what is she, how does she handle this situation right now? Keep it going. I mean, like, the, the border is not closed. Uh, you know, Joe Biden actually promised to build the fence. Mark Kelly says in his commercials that he called him out on it. The fence needs to be built. They're not doing it. So let Arizona put those, put those structures up. If the, gov if the federal government wants to come in and take them down, fine. Put up a fence in its place. But let's get something done on this issue. Arizona is passionate about getting a wall of some type put up there. Even Democrats know that. 
let's solve the issue and stop using it as a as a political ploy. Yeah, and you just saw in that interview, she she says that she doesn't think the containers are very effective. Right. Uh, but does she take Marcus's advice here and keep keep the the program grow, going, or does she sign a, a stop work order when she's up there? Because again, she is the she will be the executive. She can repeal that Governor Ducey's executive order, or does she wait? Maybe wait for the feds to put some more pressure on because the feds have told the state that they want those shipping containers gone. Yeah, I expect that the federal government is going to probably be a little bit more aggressive about stopping that. And I think when we're looking at the immigration policy that the gov that Governor Hobbs will lead on, I think she's going to be looking for more substantive, actual, meaningful things that she can do. Most of the Republican actions that have taken place in our state and federally over the past couple of years, and I think most people would agree with this, have largely been symbolic stunts, mm -hmm. right? Like if I, you know, pretty much the Republicans' plan for, on immigration is to set up a TV studio by the border where they can film ads for their TV commercials for campaigns. But really what needs to happen, there ne this is one of those things where it's like, Lean on cinema, lean on Kelly, lean on the people who want to find a solution and, and actually try and do something. All right, and final question for both of you guys. She, uh, in that interview that just aired, Hobbs told, her, told me that one of her top priorities, and not her top priority right now, is that aggregate expenditure limit. We've talked about it on the show a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, but given the fact now that uh, you've got a Democrat in the ninth floor, you've got a Republican-controlled legislature, do you think Republicans are going to be willing to uh, suspend that cap so uh, schools can get that bill full billion dollars that they were promised by the legislature in this past session. I think somehow it'll move. You got to remember to keep this in context. The legislature already approved this money. Mm -hmm. There's just a catch in the law that says you need to approve the spending of it. So that that money's been appropriated. That ship has sailed. Um, and so it just it sort of makes sense to give them that authority. But if, to your point, it will be a grind to get it done with mm -hmm. this next legislature. All right, we're going to have to end it there. Thank you guys for coming in. And up next.